welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, uh, where over the next few days we have some absolutely fantastic puzzles in train. Um, so I think uh, you're in for a treat. Um, now we're going to look at um, X-Wings in a bit more detail uh, over the next two or three days. Um, and this is in response to a number of you who, who write by email and sort of say, you know, you it's been studying Snyder notation and you know you're looking for the, the next step and you're not sh quite sure about X-Wings um, and this puzzle has come in uh, from Simon incidentally, not me, another Simon um, and apparently it involves a very early X-Wing so I know no more than that but we'll have a look at how to solve it in a second if you want to try the puzzle just click on the link under the video and that will take you to our software where you can have a go uh, just to mention as well for the patrons of the channel on Patreon, we are obviously massively thankful for the um, the support you give us. And uh, the Patreon puzzle for September um, is well on its way. Uh, probably that will come out in the next day or two as well. Uh, it's another sort of meta puzzle where there's a number of stages to solving it. So um, probably I'll do a short video on the channel introducing the topic and then those who are interested can... Um, or who are patrons will have access to it already if you are interested in becoming a patron patron uh, it's two dollars a month um, for access to the extra content and three dollars a month for access to the extra content extra puzzles and also a video on how to solve uh, the puzzles that appear uh, there so um, yeah hopefully that's of interest to some of you now um, this uh, this sort of x-wing puzzle we're doing today we are doing um, because Sam, Captain and Lines, are sort of superb web programmer, but also a brilliant solver. And it turns out Sudoku Setter has created a puzzle for us that I haven't tried yet, but he says it, it involves a sequence of X-Wings. So it involves just like X-Wing upon X-Wing upon X-Wing. Um, so I thought that would be a really good puzzle to test what we learned today um, about spotting X-Wings. So let's have a look and see how we do this. Um, right. I don't know how early the X-Wing is that we need to spot it. It's possible it's right at the start, but let's let's assume not and try and um, see where we get to. Surely we can get some digits in the grid. Six here. Ah, six here. Yes, we can. That's a six uh, because of this, uh, this triumvirate of sixes there. That means we can place a six down here. Two, three. I only want four in the grid. Fives. We can pencil mark over on the left hand side and therefore in those two squares as well. Sixes can go in one of those two squares. Sevens. Eight. Right, okay. <laughs> wow. So we've gone through the numbers and I've managed to put one digit in the grid so I'm thankful actually that um, I'm told this involves an X-Wing because otherwise it would be a real real shock to try and stare at this grid and try and work out what the number is so we have to try and figure out where an X-Wing might sit now one of the things I'd recommend in this regard is to focus on digits where we have a reasonable number of the digits in the grid and the reason I say that is it's simply not going to be very likely that say these three eights in the grid are going to yield an X-wing pattern um, you know the five these two we've only got two fives we've only got one four forget those numbers they aren't going to be the key Threes. Three threes. Right, okay, I've spotted it. 
not easy to spot, but I suppose I should have taken the fact that we got a six as being uh, indicative that that was going to be the number that was going to be the most restricted. So I can tell you we're looking for an X-wing on sixes. So take your time, stare at the grid. If you're not used to X-wings, what you're looking for is a situation where in a particular row or column, the six is limited to exactly two positions in that row or column. And then once you've found a good candidate row or column, you need to find another row or column that has exactly the same restriction. So let's let's do this in order. Let's do, go down the rows and see what we can see. So this these three rows already have sixes in them. Where can the six go in this row here? Uh, you can see there are two candidates. The, nothing is preventing a six going in either of these two positions or this position. So we've already got three positions for a six there in row four of the grid. And this, this rules out a classic X-wing. It doesn't rule out a finned X-wing, which is a more complicated topic, but I'm not going to cover that today. Let's just carry on looking for a simple X-wing. We already have a six in this one. This row, let's have a look. We can place a six here, not here, not in any of these three cells because of these two sixes in there. One here. Okay, so here we have our first potential opportunity. We found that the six is limited in row six to exactly two columns, and those columns are column one and column eight. So let's highlight those. Let's make them a different color. Now let's carry on. So let's have a look at row uh, seven of the grid. So a six can go in this position. Can't go here because of the six up there. It can't go here or here because of these two sixes. It can go here, but it can't go in column nine because of this six up there again. So here we have it. We found it. Those are the only two positions in row seven that can, can take an X-wing. And here we can actually stop. We don't have to go further because this is the X-wing pattern. We just have to consider what it means. Now to understand what an X-wing means, I think it's helpful to actually hypothesize some possible final solution shapes. So there are only two. We know if the six is in one of these two squares, oops, in, uh, in row six here, let's just imagine the six was there, just for the sake of an argument. Now if the six is here, the impact of that on row seven in the solution because we know the six can only go in one of two positions in row seven, will be that there is a six here in the finished solution. So this is one possible state of existence, a six here and a six here in the finished solution. Now the only other way these sixes could present themselves is if instead of the six being here in row six, it was here, because there's only two positions, just say it again, there's only two positions the six can go in row six. Now if the six is here, then look at the effect of that on row seven. Well, again, it's only two positions for the six in row seven, so it's gonna have to be in this square. So this is what gives the X-wing its name. We've basically got a situation where either the sixes are here, and we can draw a line connecting these sixes, or they're here. And if we draw the line connecting these sixes, it would form an X, and that's where the X-wing gets its name. But the critical thing to appreciate about this pattern, and it's a very simple thing once you start to think about it clearly, is that it's not going to be possible for there to be any sixes anywhere else in these two columns. Because we know that in the finished grid there'll either be a six here and a six here, which would obviously rule out the six from all of the yellow squares, or there'll be a six here and a six here, which does exactly the same thing. It rules out sixes from all the yellow squares. So the critical thing about an X-wing, although we found this X-wing in the rows by limiting the sixes to exactly two positions in the rows, the effect the X-wing has is on the columns. So what's the effect of it here? So we, now we need to think of, we, we can do a bit of elimination to work out which are going to be the most likely affected cells here by thinking about it. There's already a six here, so these cells aren't very interesting. These are not really affected by the X-wing. Neither is this square because of the six here. 
So one can so the two candidates in column one that are affected by the X-wing are those two. Now over here, these two cells are affected by this six already. So again, not interesting in terms of the X-wing. And the other ones are those two squares. Ah, yes, OK. OK. And it's these two squares that are going to be the most interesting. So let's have a look at these two squares. Um, so looking down this column, we've already got a 4, a 9, and a 7. And we know there's a 6 in one of these two positions. So effectively, we've got that fourth digit. So the only digits we're looking to place in terms of these two cells, what are the options for these two cells? Well, 1, 2, 3, 5, and 8 are the only options. But look, we already have a 1 and a 3 in the box. So actually, the only two options for these two cells are 2, 5, and 8. I think I said 5 before. I meant 2 anyway. 2, 5, and 8 are the only options for these two cells. But look, we've got two 8s over there as well. So because we can eliminate a 6 from these two squares, we actually find these two squares are a 2-5 pair. So 2s here mean that we can be able to place a 2 at the top there. That's going to place a 2 here. Now you can see the moment I put the 2 in here, I'm taking the place of a pencil mark 5. So I can put the 2 in, and in fact a 2 there as well. But also I get to place a 5, which is always good. Um, this one now becomes a pencil. We can put a pencil mark in here. The three as well, we get to place a pencil mark three. Oh, in fact, no, I didn't see that one. That's three on its own at the top. And the interaction of these threes mean that only threes can go in only those two squares. So we get a one three pair in this top box. The rest of it's got to be seven, eight, and nine. Uh, which means we can pencil mark some sevens, I guess. Let's do that. Oh no, in fact, there's a seven there. God, my scanning's gone to pop. Seven here, seven there. These two, in fact, nine there, eight there as well. These two squares have got to be four and nine. This must be a nine because of the nine here, ruling out a nine from any of those squares. Pencil mark nines into those two positions. This must be one and eight. 8, complete, oh, complete that box like that, 8, 9, 2, 5, ah, yes, now, nice, this 1 and 3 all of a sudden become extremely powerful now, because neither of them can go in this square, and there's only two open squares in the column, in column 8 here, so we know that this square must be a 1 or a 3. Uh, so it's definitely not a 6. And what's more, when I um, pencil mark this in as being a 1 or a 3, it has a number of effects. I mean, obviously we take the pencil mark 6 here, so we're going to be able to put a 6 at the top there. But because we've now interfered with one corner of the X-wing, we knew that the 6s were either on this diagonal or this diagonal. Now, because they're not here, we actually get to place two sixes immediately, just like that. That's absolutely going to be forced. In placing this six, we took a pencil mark of the eight, so we're going to be able to put the eight in there, the eight in here. So my eight there now. Uh, this three means this is actually a one. So we get to do a bit more filling in of the grid. So mark some eights here. This must be a three. Yes, three. Um, these squares now must be three, four, and five in some order. This one can't be three, this one can't be five. These two squares are seven and nine in some order. And this square here must be a four. Oh, and apparently my G-Force graphics driver needs updating. How exciting. Um, Right, so where do we look now for our next number? Well, let's look at the ones here, because they interact on this block quite nicely. 
They mean we can pencil mark ones on this side, which means we get a 1-5 pair in this bottom box. Now the moment we get the 1-5 pair, we can look at this one, it gives us a 1 and a 5. That means there's a 1 here, a 1 in one of those two squares. The 5 means we unwind the 5 and the 2. Must be a 5 in one of those two squares now. Two, ah, the twos are nice. Two, these twos I mean this is a two at the bottom. That takes the pencil mark of a six. I get the six in as well. This is a six. So this is a seven or a nine in the bottom left corner. I'm gonna actually get rid of the X-wing colours now. They're starting to distract me. So let's let's go back to this. Um Pencil mark some threes into these two squares. What else do we need? Fours and sevens into seven up here. So that must be seven in one of those two positions. And there's a four in any of those four positions. So let's just pencil mark it all in and see what we can see. Um, up here we need four and five as well as the eight. It's just four, five, eight. That this is not an eight. Along here we need uh, one, three, four, and nine. There you go. That squares a four because there's already a one, three, and the nine in the column. And you can see as soon as I place the four here, magical things start to happen elsewhere in the grid. That's going to give us a three over on the right hand side. The square now here is either a 1 or a 9. And this square must either be a 1 or a 9 as well. This can no longer be a 4 at the top. So we now need 5, 7 and 8. So the, oh, why have I got 2 here? I should have, should have cleared that up before. Apologies. Ah, oh dear. Um, so 5, 7 into this square, that's 5, 7 or an 8 there, 4, 5, Seven, two, three. Oh, there's so much going on here now. Um, so 3, 4, 5 and 8, so this is 3, 5 or 8. This square, what's that square going to be? A 4 or a 9, I guess? Up here, therefore, we need to put a 7 into one of those squares. Uh, because we haven't got a 7 in this block yet. Now, you can see that by pencil marking 7s into those two squares, I resolve that this is in fact a 5. That means that top one's an 8. That must, oh, that, ah, that must be an 8, that must be a 7, that must be a 4, that must be a 5. That means that's a 4, that's a 4, that's a 9. Maybe we're on the uh, final, final home straight now. So now this should be a 3, I think. That means that's not a 3. The only place a 3 can go now is there. 7, 4, 5, 7. This is 4, 7. Right, let's look at these two squares. Because one of these squares, that's going to have to be the 1. That's the 9. That's the 7. That's a 7. That should be a 9. That should be a 4, I think. That means this is 4, 5, 7 like that. This is 4, this is 5. Not to forget the bottom corner. Let's check. It's looking correct. And so that's how to finish the puzzle. So I hope that was a useful run through. Very interesting puzzle. Very early X-Wing. Uh, if you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing. We really appreciate it. And we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.